Hi, my name is Ben Plesier and I am a fervent user of Wappler. Welcome to this series of videos where I will create an e-commerce application which I have called, Boutique. I intend to start off building a simple shopfront app which will gradually expand to a full-blown e-commerce app. One reason for this approach is to silence one of my adversaries who has challenged me to create the app within the hour. Well, he is not really an adversary, he is a Wappler ambassador who has already created a full CRUD application within half an hour. So, wish me luck. The application will be built using Node.js and SQLite for the back end. But do not worry if you prefer to use PHP and MySQL, the process will be the same. The only difference will be evident in the structure of the site and the use of the Express templating engine. Without further ado, here I have started Wappler. I go to the new project icon and create a new blank project. The project name is Boutique. I copy the and create a new folder for the project. I paste the copied name to name the folder the same as the project name. This is not obligatory. It is just my way of being able to keep track of the projects. I leave the other default values and save the setup. Wappler has created two blank pages. The open page is the index or home page. The main page is the layout page. This is one of the advantages when using Node.js with Express. You will have noticed that the pages have an EJS extension. EJS stands for Embedded JavaScript and is used for templating. As we move on, you will notice that the layout page is in fact the template. So, let me go ahead and place a navigation bar in the layout page. I click on the section that will contain the page content and hit the plus icon at the top. This is so that I can place the navigation bar above the content. From the blocks menu, I choose navigation and one of the available items. I even change the name to the name of the project. Okay. This is the public facing part of the project. I will leave this part for now so that I can concentrate on what makes the application pump, the heart and soul. Here I am talking about the database and the actions that have to be created to create, read, update and delete the data. These actions are lovingly referred to as CRUD actions. First off, this is what the database will look like. For any retail business to function, they need products to sell and customers to buy. So, here is the products table that is linked to the categories table. If this was a used motor vehicle business, then categories would most likely be called makes. Products would most likely be called models. In other words, these table names can be changed to suit the business. Then there is the customers table. Each customer will have made a purchase, or even multiple purchases. The link table is called orders, but this could be called, invoice. Lastly, there is the order items that appear in the order. At this stage of the tutorial, I have kept the database as simple as possible so as to not confuse the newcomers to Wappler. Later on there will be tables for administrators and blogs. I will also introduce security and login facilities. But that is for later. Back in Wappler, I will now create the database and the tables as discussed. For this I go to the database manager and create a new connection. The name of the database can be anything to your liking. I have called it DB. As previously mentioned, this is a SQLite database for which there is no server requirement. We do need to create a database file which I place inside the project's root folder. Then I proceed to create the tables. The first table is called Categories. When the table is created, Wappler automatically enters the ID field. The next table is a subtable of categories and is called products. Then I create a table called customers. This is followed by a subtable of customers, called orders. Lastly is the items table as a subtable of orders. Let me add a few fields to the first table.
As you can see, these fields all default to a string. The string, in turn, has a default length of 255 characters. This is where I pause the video so that you do not have to put up with my clumsy typing habits. During the pause, I will enter the remaining fields in the relevant tables. I have now entered all of the fields that are required. If you are following this tutorial and want to create the tables as shown, you can use this schema as your guide. Just remember that live and featured are Boolean values that are shown as tiny int in the schema. If I click on the advanced tab, we see that Wappler has added the foreign key field to the subtables. There are a few things to note here. The tables all have the plural form. Categories, products, customers etc. When Wappler adds the foreign key field, it adds the singular form of the name of the foreign table to the ID of the foreign key. As mentioned before, all of the fields have defaulted to a string with a length of 255 characters. This will now be corrected. I go ahead and change the maximum length of the strings and change the fields that are not strings. The short description remains as a string with the default length. The long description is changed to a text field. Price is changed to a decimal field. The dates are changed to a date field. Live and featured are changed to Boolean. Amount becomes a decimal. Oops. It looks like I missed the tracking order. I will change the maximum length of that outside of this video. For the last table, product ID, Price and quantity need to be changed and we are done making the changes. Lastly, I need to apply the database changes. This requires a short description of what was changed in case I need to revert to a previous version. So far, I have created a new Node.js project, created a SQLite database and populated the database with tables and fields. In the next video, I will create the server-side CRUD actions. I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.